Indonesia has various cultures from its local ethnics. Each region has its different characteristics. Marion is a city located in East Java. Its motto as Kota Gadis, Perdagangan, Pendidikan, dan Perindustrian, Universitas PGRI Madiun Unipma plays a major role to develop the quality of education both nationally and internationally. Universitas PGRI Madiun Unipma has achieved some award, winning the award of top university AKU from Kabupaten 7, getting institution accreditation B, winning national competition grants, and many more. UNIGMA has two postgraduate programs and four faculties for undergraduate program with 22 departments. Postgraduate program Indonesian Language and Literature Education and Social Science Education. Undergraduate programs Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Faculty of Health Sciences and Science, Faculty of Engineering, and Faculty of Economics and Business. To support students' activities and develop students' talents and creativities, there are also some students' activity centers. Choir, band, theater, modern and traditional dance, karate, student regiment, and scout. In encouraging the smart and competitive alumni, UNIPMA also provides representative facilities, convenient classrooms, Campus 1, Campus 2, Campus 3, Library, Laboratories, Micro Teaching and Computer, Sports Center, Language and Culture Center, Graha Cendekia, Dormitory, Gamlan Room, Universitas PKRI Madiun Unigma commits to give learning oriented education and student independence to develop their abilities and skills by organizing some activities such as national and international seminars. Universitas PGR Imadiun and Kepadeh. Unigma, smart and competitive. Okay, sure. okay, good uh, morning, everyone. Um, I say uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second day of our virtual conference of International Conference on Education and Technology 2021 in the scope STEAM Best Education. I would like to say welcome to everyone that has joined this virtual conference today for the presenters. I say welcome from uh, ISPSG from Yokohama National University. I say welcome to all of you. And my name is Kuku Tadalaksono. Uh, as a moderator today, I will lead you from the start until the end of the session. To shorten the time, I would like to remind you about the rules. Presenters and non-presenters are participants who are registered in the ICTEC 2021 conference management system. Participants cannot be represented by anyone. And following the video conference, you must keep the camera on and, and the microphone must be mute except for ask something. You are required to use the raise hand feature or type it through the chat feature when you ask. When you need to ask questions or give comments, uh, you must convey it uh, clearly. And next for the important rules of our presentation. Uh, actually, I will divide into three sessions. For the first session, there will be first, second, and third presenters that will be delivered their presentation. After three of them finish, we will have a question and answer. 
and then continue to the presenter fourth, fifth, and sixth. After finish, will be followed by question and answer. Then uh, presenter seventh and eighth, followed by uh, question and answer. And don't forget that each of presenters has 15 minutes to present their presentation. And for the question and answer, because uh, I think we don't have so much time, I will limit the question maybe to question or more. It would, uh, it depends on the on the uh, how much time we have. And we're still waiting for the orders, but I think we can start uh, now. For the first in my list of the presenters today, there will be delivered by Mr. Atsuhi from Yokohama National University. Hello, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for my introduction. And can you see my screen right now? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, I just. Okay. Okay, thank you very much again. And my name is Atsushi Miura from Yokohama National University. And today I will present my recent practice adapting synchronous computer mediated communication into second language classrooms. So, okay, let's start my presentation, but it doesn't work. Okay, so these are the contents of my talk. So first, I reviewed the previous empirical findings of the effect of text chat on second language learning and teaching. And next, I will share my recent practice adapting text chat into my class. And finally, I discuss the effect of adapting text chat and provide the implications for language classrooms and teaching. Okay, let's move on. And first, let me explain what the computer mediated communication is. So first, computer mediated communication divided into two systems, synchronous and asynchronous computer mediated communication. In my talk, I focus on the synchronous computer mediated communication, SCMC, for example, Skype, Zoom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams. However, asynchronous computer mediated communication are mailing, sending mailing and messages, and also blogging. So synchronous computer mediated communication enables us to interact or communicate each other smoothly, like synchronously online. In addition to that, synchronous computer mediated communication divided into two modalities, video call and text chat. For example, Zoom is one of the video call SCMC. However, in the sending a text chat is the right side of the system of the SCMC. So in my class, I adopt the text chat based activity, which is kind of a CMC systems. Okay, so let me quickly review the previous literatures on the effect of text chat on second language learning of the teaching. Because of the time consuming, uh, time, time, time demands, I picked up the most famous articles in language learning articles or computer assisted language learning journals. So as you can see, many of the researchers in second language acquisition or computer assisted language learning, learning researchers had been, have, have been focusing on the effect of text-based internet chat or synchronous computer mediated communication. Moreover, they pay attention to the relationship between text-based internet chat or SCMC and overall fluency or speaking proficiency. So I just summar quickly summarized the results of SCMC on, in the second lecture development. So as you can see, Previous literatures provided the mixed effect, for example, positive effect and no effect or non-significant effect. For example, these, these literatures, 
For example, Chen and Kang investigated the, the classroom participation provided the positive effect of SCMC classrooms. And also Kim at all 2019 and 2020 investigated the grammar acquisition and also successfully provided, provided the positive effect. And also my research with my colleague Nagamine Takayuki, 2025 and Sata, 2008 provided a positive effect. However, Lin, 2014 and Zegra, 2016, uh, these are the meta analysis of the effect of SCMC on psychology development provided the non-significant effect. Thus, we need to investigate more, more, and provide the more validate and reliable evidence. In addition to that, because of the COVID-19, we, or almost all classes, are uh, held online. Thus, I decided to adopt a CMC text chart into my English class. So I share in this talk, I share my recent own practice adopting text chat into my second language classrooms. So the target classes are these class one, the class size 30 students and proficiency, elementary and textbooks, carry and carry 1991, and class style first, I did the pre-instruction to the main task. In the pre-instruction, I just quickly present the useful vocabulary for the main tasks. And next, we did the pair work, which is the main task of the course. And finally, I quickly wrap up the task. And the class length, 60 minutes times 30 times, but this is a twice a week. That means the course were held uh, in 15 weeks. And the class two, this is the same at the second grade of the college and class size 30 students and proficiency elementary to pre-intermediate and textbooks, Harry and Living 2019 and a class style, we did, the, we did group discussion first. And finally wrap up, however, the students were expected to read an article in the textbook, which is related to the group discussion topic as a homework. And the length of the class is the same as class one. Oh, these class were held based on the task-based language learning, which is the famous class style in second language acquisition research or recently proposed class, class style based on the SLA theory. So this is the examples of the task. In my class, the students have completely different pictures in the pair work, for example, before the crime and after the crime, like this. And also in my class, this is the examples of the text-based interaction. For example, Mr. Grant had a tie on his neck, Mr. Grant. And in my picture, he did not have a tie. He only wore a striped shirt, right? Really? So I guess he killed the criminal with his tie. So this is a, the topic of the murder, murder. And that's right, I agree. Do you have his name? He is Jay Wells. The man wearing t-shirts with one line is B Wells, like this. I cannot see that man. I can see only J Wells in the mirror, he reflects. I think B Wells was killed, yes. So this is an example of the task and the interactions. Let me quickly discuss the findings and findings of the effect of text chats. So the topics of my discussions are developing oral skills and potential of text as an input, corrective feedback, motivation, and limitations. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I just conducted my research investigating the oral fluency in my class. So I just presented the result at annual pronunciation in second language learning at teaching PSLT, PSLLT two months ago. So if you're interested in it, please let me know and I will send you my poster. In this talk, I 
focus on the pose behavior while speaking. So these box plots provided the results of pre and post data for my class one students. So mid cross pose ratio means that the frequency of pose within the close. However, final close pose ratio means that the frequency of pose between the closes. As you can see, uh, but only the performance by the class one shows a positive tendency to decrease the frequency of poses, right? So that I conclude that the text chat activities have a positive effect on fluency development. But however, I look at the each result, each student's result, some develops develop their skills, but the others do not. So indicate this indicates the individual variation. So that further investigation is needed. Okay, next discussion and potential of text as an input. The student can see the many sentences from their partners or the instructors, unlike the oral interactions, right? So that they can learn what they wanted to express, for example, vocabularies or grammatical structures. And also they can mimic some expressions from others. So that text chat message can be a target language input, which is essential and important to acquire second language or, or language, and also which they can use directly to expressing their messages. So this is this is an advantage of text-based internet chat. And also corrective feedback. So this is an example of the recast. One student said that, I think the man killed by Mike, but this is an error sentence. The student dropped B, but this is a passive sentence, right? So the instructor I prepare his sentence, the man was killed by Mike. This is a big cast. And also I characterize the error was. The corrective feedback can be seen explicitly in the text. We can highlight the error with capitalizing, underlying, and bolding. This makes the students notice their error easily, right? And this is an advantage of the, this is a uh, another advantage and motivation. This is the answer of my questionnaire. Student A, since we could not see the partner's face, I could take time to think about what I should say, unlike oral, oral interaction. So this is a positive attitude to interact in English. However, student B, I am not sure whether my partner understood what I said. In the daily conversation, we can see their face so that, and we feel that the partner seems not to understand what I said. But in the text chat, we cannot. So that this is the disadvantage. However, in my reflections, all of most of all students were not good at speaking English, and also we they feel they fail, they do not, did not like English at all. But overall, most of all students participated in the task actively and interacted in English. They did not use Japanese, the mother tongue. They said that they could get the confidence to speak English according to the questionnaire at the final day of the class. So this is the advantage and however, we, I found the limitations. So smooth interactions while text chatting depend on their typing speed rather than their English proficiency or English skills. So this is English class that, so that typing speed or typing skills is not needed. It's not necessary. However, in terms of the 21st century skills, it is important to get the higher typing skills, for example, faster typing and brain touch. 
So in terms of the education, rather than the English education, this, is, this can be an advantage for my students. Okay, quickly summarize my results and findings and final remarks. So technology media language learning, text chatting has positive effect for acquiring second language in terms of four different dimensions, fluency and input, corrective feedback and motivation. However, this element, we have some disadvantages, uh, typing speed and we cannot see their partners or group members face, but both can be an advantage. So I conclude a text chat based class style may have benefits for many dimensions of second language development and also pedagogy or education. So this is my presentation and these are the selected references. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's it, the presentation for Mr. Asmi Miura. And we go into the next presenters. That in my list, there will be Ma'am Jocelyn that will be present uh, the representation about uh, the title is Graduate School Services Basis for an Improvement Plan. Ma'am Jocelyn, uh, it's your time. Sorry, ma'am, you still mute. Okay. okay. I can hear. Um, oh, yes. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm just arranging my slides. Uh, can you see? Can you see them now? Yes, ma'am. Oh yes. Okay. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is once again. This is Jocelyn Dinardo Absolor, Associate Professor of Philosopher Polytechnic State College. My study is entitled Graduate School Services. Basis for an Improvement Plan. The summary of my study is seen in the abstract, as you can see. Institution of higher education are increasingly realizing that they are part of the service industry and that they are now giving emphasis on the student satisfaction of these different services catered by the graduate school. As presented in the abstract of my study, um, this study primarily aimed to determine the student's level of satisfaction on the three dimensions considered in the study. First is the professional services, second is the school facilities, and the third one is the um, learning environment. The graduate school is the apex is at the apex of the educational system in the field of education. Graduate students is one of the more effective means of improving capacities of education professionals who aim to contribute to the continued improvement of teaching and learning in the classrooms, the delivery of student services and management of educational programs. This is being stipulated in CHED Memorandum Order number 53 series of 2007. Now the rule of the graduate school is therefore to perform the role of higher education is very important. All HEIs catering advanced higher education um, Students, uh, where students choose to pursue their studies is deemed responsible in offering the best services for its clientele, classified as an advanced higher education. Therefore, it is duty bound to provide clientele satisfaction and the services offered by its unit. Again, I would like to emphasize that the provision of quality services to the stakeholders should not only be seen as a mandate by any higher education institution offering advanced higher education, but rather a commitment. 
As I have said, this study generally aimed to assess the student satisfaction on the three uh, dimensions considered in this study, which I mentioned a while back. For the objectives of this study, um, this study aimed to look into the profile of the respondents, profile of the respondents in terms of age, sex, um, position, uh, school uh, type of school employed employed in, and other variables considered in this study. And the second objective of this study is to determine the level of satisfaction along along professional services, the school facilities, and, and learning environment. The study also determined the relationship between the profile and the level of, the, between the profile of the respondents and the level of satisfaction. It also identified the strength and weaknesses of the services of the college, specifically the graduate school. And then the last one is to, to answer, is to identify what improvement plan can be formulated to improve the services of the graduate school. For the, method, uh, for the methodology of this study, this study made use of the descriptive design, descriptive employing correlational and developmental methods. The descriptive design dealt on the, on the profile of the respondents and the level of satisfaction of the respondents while the correlational part, uh, part dealt on the uh, on the relationship between the profile and the uh, and the level of satisfaction the developmental uh, the developmental design was employed in the development of improvement plan for the local of this study uh, the, uh, in our college there are only two campuses offering graduate studies we have the Tagudin campus and Santa Maria campus, which serve as the local of this study. For the sample size, 120, 120 sample size were, were actually considered using the G power and applying the following input parameters, effect size 0 0.03, uh, moderate alpha error probability of 0 0.05 power, uh, 0 0.095 arri arriving to a, sa a sample size of 120 distribu uh, distributed equally 60 from Tagudin campus and 60 from uh, 60 samples from Santa Maria campus. The main instrument in gathering data for this study is a survey questionnaire actually taken from NBC 461, the, the QCE part of this NBC 461. This is actually used by all uh, SUCs in the Philippines to evaluate their professional competencies of their of their faculty, and uh, for the for the second part of the for the other parts of the questionnaire, especially data eliciting the the satisfaction on the school facilities and and learning environment were uh, were actually constructed by by the researcher herself, a uh, subject for uh, subjected for. Uh, rela uh, validity and reliability, reliability index. For the statistical tools of the study, the following, uh, the follow, uh, the following statistical tools were used, frequency count and percentage, simple bivariate correlations, and from back alpha. Let me proceed to my next slide presenting to you, uh, presenting to you the uh, findings, the salient findings of this study. For the profile, it was revealed that the students enrolled in the ISPSC graduate school are in their early 20s. Majority are female. They are actually single. Employed, they are, most of them are employed in public schools and they occupy teacher one position and they are still young in the service. That's for the profile as revealed by the, uh, by the uh, data. For the level of satisfaction, um, for professional services, it received 4.3 as a mean, and this, this, this is described as very highly satisfied. For the school facilities, uh, the other respondents uh, rated it uh, high with 3.69 as a mean, described as highly satisfied. And the last dimension, learning environment, was rated 4.14 with highly satisfied rating. 
All in overall, with a mean of uh, 4.14, it shows that the respondents are highly satisfied with the services offered by the Graduate School of Ilocosur Polytechnic State College. Examining the relationship between the profile and the level of satisfaction, factors such as years of teaching and position year, uh, shows uh, show effect on their satisfaction. Years show effect on their satisfaction of the services has bearing on the professional services as the as they are younger they uh, they uh, they uh, their te, uh, their level of satisfaction is yeah, high the young uh, the younger the younger the younger respondent show high satisfaction on professional services position on the other hand has a definite but small relationship to school facilities and learning environment as well this Result implies that those who have more years in the teaching experience has higher regard to professional services. For the strengths and weaknesses of the services, the accessibility of books and computers in the library and dormitories were identified as, as weaknesses with 3.3 and 3.337 means respectively. Uh, since these were the identified weaknesses of the services, this came out to be a benchmark in the formulation of the improvement plan with the following parts. The key result areas, the key result areas considered in this study are the weaknesses identified, the access of books of, in the library and dormitories. They were actually identified as weaknesses. So... Um, the part of this improvement plan uh, have, um, has, uh, has uh, the, this improvement plan has these parts. We have the key result areas, the objectives, strategies, persons involved, budgetary requirements, time frame, and success indicators. All the necessary measures that will actually improve or enhance this, these services are, for, are, are forwarded in this, in this improvement plan. For the conclusions of this study, um, as found in the profile, uh, we have a very young enrollees in the graduate school. So uh, young in the profession, but they, sh uh, they shall, oh my God, just wait. I'm very sorry. I uh, put the for the conclusion of this study, um, students are highly satisfied with the with the services offered of the graduate school. Just a summary of uh, just a summary of the findings um, arriving to these conclusions. The profile projects that students enrolled at the ISPSC graduate school are mostly female on the age bracket of 20, 21 to 25 single employed in public schools and occupying teacher one position. That is for the conclusion for the profile. And for the level of satisfaction, it came out that the respondents are highly satisfied with the services offered by the graduate school. The years of teaching displays a relationship on professional services. Position, on the other hand, has a definite but small relationship to school facilities and learning environment. The students identified that accessibility of books and computers in the library and dormitories were, were areas that require improvement. Improvement plan is recommended to be implemented. That is for the conclusion of the uh, conclusions of the study. For the recommendations, the students should see the benefits of finish, finishing their master's degree at a very early stage of their career. The graduate school shall continue improving its services to provide maximum satisfaction for the clientele. The accessibility of books and the use of dormitory services should be addressed immediately. This ends my presentation. Okay, thank you, ma'am, uh, for the great presentation by ma'am Jocelyn. That. Thank you. And we move to the our two presenters. And please for Dr. Ranes to share your uh, file first. And the Dr. Ranes will be present of the 
titled English as a Medium of Instruction, the case of technology related uh, with the classroom. We can start now, Dr. Anis. Okay, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, magandang umaga, or should I say good morning to everyone. In the teaching learning process, a certain language as the medium of instruction plays a vital role in ensuring uh, the success in the delivery of instruction. This has given birth to various policies on what language should be used in, the, in teaching. And one of these policies is the use of English as a medium of instruction or the, what we we call EMI. EMI is defined as the use of English language to teach academic subjects other than English course itself. In other countries or jurisdictions where the first language of the majority of the population is not English. With the growing fame and demand of EMI or English as a medium of instruction in the global arena, I, I chose to deal with EMI, and in so doing, I formulated this study with the title, English as a Medium of Instruction, the Case of Technology-Related Classrooms. In the conduct of this study, I look into review or, or I, I reviewed literatures in which those studies focus on the effects of EMI, the attitude or perceptions towards EMI, the achievements of students on EMI, and most studies were focused on English as a foreign language, and some focus on English as second language. And majority of the studies focused or used quantitative approaches, especially the experimental design. What are known based on the review of literature? The context, uh, the context of English in higher education courses that use EMI, especially on technology or non-academic courses, and the, the EMI in the context of multilingual society, focusing on the challenges, issues, and mechanisms in the use of EMI. These two are some of the two gaps or the gaps that were identified in the systematic review of literature or the, the review of literature of 161 studies published across the world. From these gaps, I formulated or I was able to craft my, my statement of the problem in which this study focused on or aimed to uh, describe the use of English as a medium of instruction and technology related degree programs in one state college in Ilocos, Philippines, as a basis in formulating an EMI framework for technology courses. I also looked specifically on the challenges of the teachers in using EMI, their coping mechanism as they face the challenges. And I also look into the mechanisms of teachers in, this, in the use of EMI in terms of designing lessons, delivering lessons and assessing students. And from those mechanisms, I was able to formulate a framework in using EMI in technology related classroom. In the conduct of this study, I followed the following procedures. My study is a qualitative case study or it used qualitative approach. I followed first school protocols, then do some ethical considerations by getting the consent of the participants of the study. I, I located also the, the, the teachers who are teaching technology related courses. I was able to identify 25 teachers and upon saturation of data, I settled with 16 participants. The 16 participants were interviewed. After the interviews were lucratively conducted, I transcribed the interview recordings and then conducted spot checking for accuracy of data or correctness of the extended text. Upon spot checking, I did the cool and warm analysis or identified the significant statements and then do the thematization in order to summarize the findings of the study. While doing the cool and warm analysis, I did member checking procedures, which include um, follow-up interviews, checking of the interview transcripts by the participants and dissemination of the study. From the cool and warm analysis, the framework in using EMI was developed. 
Now, in terms of the coping mechanisms and uh, the challenges and coping mechanism of the teachers, I was able to, uh, to identify three, three uh, challenges of teachers and one coping mechanism, which, is, which are dubbed as C of using EMI, which stands for S, speaking English fluently, eliciting interaction, explaining lessons, and applying code switching. Now in the diagram or on the diagram, you can see here the simulacrum of the study, which is actually a, a framework. Now in the use of EMI, they are very much challenged in speaking English fluently. They also have difficulty in eliciting interaction and they also have difficulty in explaining the lesson. In, in order to cope with this one, they apply code switching through the use of English, Ilocano language and the Filipino language. Now, from the sharing of the participants on their mechanisms in using EMI in terms of designing lessons, delivering lessons and uh, assessing students, I was able to formulate the KASAMA framework. KASAMA is an acronym which stands for okay, knowing your students, A, aligning students, aligning objectives and content activities, S, simplifying content, A, asking questions and making students use English, and A, applying correct language mechanics and grammar. Now, KASAMA, KASAMA is a Tagalog or Filipino word which means a partner or a companion. In short, in the use of English as a medium of instruction, the teachers act as partners of the students in order to help them develop also their English language proficiency or fluency. Now, knowing your students and aligning objectives and content activities are the mechanisms used by teachers in designing their lessons. Simplifying content and asking questions are the mechanisms of teachers in uh, delivering the lessons or explaining the lessons. And making students use English and applying correct language mechanics grammar and grammar are the mechanisms of teacher in assessing their students. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you the the model or the framework that I, I was able to formulate or I was able to design. As you can see here, the inner circle talks about the mechanisms in using English as a medium of instruction in technology related classrooms. Outside the, the next circle is the three parameters, designing lessons, delivering lessons and assessing lessons. And the outer uh, circles um, talk, talk about, uh, the outer circle talk about, talks about the mechanisms of the teachers West, which I mentioned um, a, a while ago. Now, this framework could be used in, in, the use, in using EMI or in using English as a medium of instruction and in technology related classrooms. Um, this study concluded that teachers remain steadfast and flexible in addressing the demands of learners and the teaching learning process as EMI flourishes in challenges per pervade. Hence, uh, higher education institutions should ensure and include continuous EMI trainings for teachers who are teaching technology courses because most of the English trainings were given only to language teachers. Now, higher education institutions should also include training those teachers who are teaching technology courses. And to do this one, it is also forwarded or recommended that future investigations should be conducted to provide more eidetic portraits of EMI in the Philippine higher education institution. With that, I say mabuhay ang pananaliksik. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ranis, for the presentation. <clears throat> and now we're going to uh, our session of question and answer. Please, if you have a question for uh, the first presenter, Mr. Asui Miura or uh, Dr. Jocelyn or Dr. Anish, you can type it in the chat box or you can uh, directly to raise the hand and then uh, directly to ask for the presenters. And here, there is a question for Sir Asuhi from uh, 
Dr. Anes. Yeah. The question is, in your study, do you think tech sharing is limited to developing only written L2 fluency? You can uh, answer it, sir. Uh, I didn't investigate the development in, on of written L2 fluency, but I'm sure that text chat text chatting is positive effect on written L2 fluency, right? But not limited to written L2 fluency. I just investigate the oral fluent oral L2 fluency, and I believe that the text chat is positive effect on L2 oral, not written oral fluency. Is that Is it is it okay? Um, since it's a uh, sir, it since it's a text messaging, you use text messaging. Um, do you think that it it only measured the the written flow fluency, not the oral fluency? Uh, I just measured that for only oral fluency, not written fluency, right? Through text messaging, sir. Yes. Interesting. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the answer from uh, Sir Asui Miura. Very much. And if, if if you have question, I think oh uh, Prof Siro Azima, you have question, sir. Yeah, um I think okay. there, there there is a misunderstanding. Um so Dr. Uh, is it right Ranich? Um so I think he understood that uh, Atsushi Miura um, measured, um, just measured uh, written fluency, but I think, yeah, um, text chat is writing, of course, but I think he used this method of writing, text chat, and then he measured oral fluency after his classes. So his, his test was on, oral production, but the, the method of teaching was text chat. So, so he went from written um, modality to oral right. modality. So uh, when he uh, tested the effects of text chat. So I think there was a little bit of confusion. And, but I have, I have my own question um, for Atsushimura. Um, so you said if you measure a uh, written fluency, um, if you measure the effects of text chat on written fluency, you said um, there will be some positive effects. Mm. But how can we measure uh, written fluency separately from um, the fluency of typing? Because if students uh, practice text chat, I think their typing fluency will increase, um, but that is not the same thing as uh, second language written fluency. So how can we separate um, these two things? I think they are related, but they are not the same thing. So that's my uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's a very difficult question for me, but the reason why I'm answering that because I just, the Text chatting is a kind of production practice, which is to which is related to the speaking and also writing. So that's why I just say text chatting or production practice. Well, one kind of product production practice is benefit for the dimensional product production with speaking and written. But uh, how measured? The written with fluency. Uh, I'm sorry, I've never been investigating the measurement of written fluency so that I cannot come up. But how? <laughs> so so I, I just wondered how, yes. <laughs> okay, maybe we can talk about this later. I have, I have yeah. um, can I ask? A question to Dr. Jocelyn Abu Solo. Is it okay? Oh, sure. 
Yes, yeah. sir. Um, yes, so I'm, I'm curious about um, um, teacher training in the Philippines. So many of the graduate students who took part in your research, they are teachers. Okay, they are uh, public school teachers. Um, yes. And holding, I think you said, a teacher one position. And so uh, the first question is, what is this teacher one position? Is it like the highest status position of teachers in the Philippines? Or is it like, you know, just like, you know, full-time teachers? Or is it like um, the initial RES uh, position that the young teachers hold. So what is this uh, teacher one position? And also, is it is it very common? Is it a common thing for uh, Filipino teachers to go to uh, graduate school as part of their teacher training? Uh, I'm just curious. Yes, yes, yes. Let me answer the first questions raised by Sir Shiro. Am I right, sir, in pronouncing yes, your name, yes, Sir Shiro? Yes. Um, teacher one position is actually a position prescribed by the Department of Education. Teacher one, uh, you are curious whether that is a high position or a low position. It is actually the, the lowest position. It is a permanent position given to a teacher teaching in a public school. We have teacher starting from teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, until, uh, until they are elevated to master teacher level based on their promotion merit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the second question is that is it really a, uh, a training for uh, the uh, for the teachers to enroll in the graduate school? Mm -hmm. Well, um, there is actually a, uh, a circular, uh, which is a circular memorandum from coming from the Department of Education, which actually stipulates that the teacher should develop professionally. And the only way they can develop and grow professionally is when they attend seminars. And not only that, but to enroll in the graduate school to further their studies. OK, thank you very much. OK, thank you for Prof. Shirozima for the question. and. If there is no question, uh, I would like to continue to the, our second session of the presenter that will be uh, present their paper. And for the first presenter, that would be uh, to, to Mr. Kaizu Mori from Yokohama National University with the title Flip Classroom in Japanese High School English Education. Sir, you can start your yes. presentation. Can you see my screen and can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Um, now, let me um, start my presentation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for giving me to make a presentation about my research. Firstly, let me introduce myself briefly. Um, my name is Keiju Mori, and I'm an English teacher at public high school in Japan. Now, I have been teaching English for 13 years, and last year, I became a graduate student of Yokohama National University uh, in order to um, do research about flipped classroom. So my research topic is flipped classroom or um, blended learning using ICT tools. According to one definition of flipped classroom, this is a learning model in which content attainment is shifted forward to outside of an online format and then followed by a teacher facilitated concept application activities in class. And there have been some findings about this method, things like classroom engagement and self-efficacy of the students grow significantly in statistics. Now I found that there are some um, there have been some findings about university uh, education about this free classroom, but 
not so much um, studies about this flipped classroom have been done for uh, secondary schools. So I decided to engage that, I, I decided to examine the advantages of this flipped classroom for secondary schools. So I said that two research questions here, research question one, does flipped classroom have an effect on students' grammar comprehension? And research question two, does flipped classroom lead students' positive attitudes for learning English? And here's about the methods I used. I used, a, I adapted a quasi-experimental pretest post-test design, and I used a questionnaire to examine students' positive attitudes for learning English. And study groups were two Japanese high school classrooms who were first year students, um, age of 15 and 16. And I conducted this study on January in 2021, this year. And I set one classroom as the ex experimental group and the other one as the control group. Here is an experimental, experimental process. The experimental group received a flipped classroom. And on the other hand, the control group received traditional classroom. And both of the groups took pretest about grammar comprehension here, about second conditional and third conditional in English. And after eight lessons about second conditional and third conditional, they took post-test about grammar comprehension of the same points. And they also took the questionnaire to um, measure the positive attitudes for learning English. Here's about video lectures I used in the experimental group, I mean, in the flipped classroom. I myself made lecture videos using screen recording on my computer, and I uploaded the lecture videos on YouTube, my uh, platform, my YouTube platform, and I sent the links of each video to the students so that they could watch them before the class. And I told the students in the experimental group to watch each lecture video before the class so that I could use more time for having students engaging in uh, communicative activities like uh, speaking with partners or having discussion about the topics. And on a figure two in the right side, uh, this is one example of a screen of lecture video I made. I, exp I copied the text from uh, the textbooks I used and I explained the key points, the important points about English structure or the key points of the conditional um, in, my, uh, in my videos, I explained uh, those uh, points in Japanese, uh, which, were the, which are the native language for the students. And here's about um, data collection. And this is an example of a test I used. For example, uh, if students understand the second conditional um, correctly, they can choose the correct answer. And um, for example, here, uh, if he or she understands the concepts of a second conditional, uh, they can choose uh, number four as the correct answer. And I calculated the average score and the total scores of the students. And I made uh, 16 questions uh, about uh, this pretest and post-test in total. And each, um, each type has uh, four questions. And um, this is about the questionnaire. The items of the questionnaire for the students were chosen from other study, which focused on grading students' classroom engagement. Here are the examples of the questionnaire. For example, question number one, lesson is appropriate for the purpose of English teaching. Question number two, lesson is helpful for English learning. Question number three, lesson provides appropriate tools, things like lecture videos. And 10 questions were used in this study. Here's one um, uh, data 
about the pre pretest and post test. I conducted the pair two test about the scores of the students in the experimental group and the control group. So according to this data, uh, p value of type one and type two in both groups or 0.001. So it means that both of the groups uh, score significantly higher in the post-test compared with the pre-test. Then I, I compared the experimental group and the control group about type one and type two. Here are the graphs of type one and type two. So as you can see uh, in type two, the scores of the experimental group were significantly higher than uh, that of the control group. He's um, finding about the t-test about the score of the pre-test and the post-test between the experimental group and the control group. So according to this result, a p value of type two was below 0 0.05. And uh, it means that in type two, the scores of the experimental group was significantly higher than that of the control group. And here's about the, the result about the average scores of each question of the questionnaire. And I expected that the scores of the experimental group was higher than that of the control group. However, uh, I couldn't find any significant difference between the scores of the questionnaire. And here is about the findings for the research question number one, does flipped classroom have an effect on students' grammar comprehension? And in type one, there was no statistically significant difference. And in type two, there was statistically significant difference between the two groups. So it can be concluded that flipped classroom had a positive influence on some part of students' grammar comprehension. And for research question two, does fruit classroom lead students positive attitudes for learning English? Um, no significant difference was found between the experimental group and the control group. And one of the reasons I thought uh, is that uh, both groups, I mean, uh, the experimental group and the control group were in a similar environment in that both of them participated in language activities using ICT tools, um, applications for the tablet computers or smartphones. And there are other limitations uh, of my, about my research. For example, in the timing of the questionnaire, uh, I only conducted the questionnaire only after the A lessons. But if I conducted the questionnaire uh, before the lessons, I, I think I could get more accurate data about the students' attitudes for language learning. And also I use the multiple choice question about grammar comprehension in my uh, research. But one of the advantages is about adopting a uh, flipped classroom. It is said that um, it means that students have more time for engaging the uh, communicative activities. So it would have been better for um, using different uh, tests for measuring students' ability of English. And I believe that uh, there are lots of potential advantages of flipped classroom. And um, analyzing this method from various perspectives, it would be necessary, for example, whether it is good for expressing knowledge or implicit knowledge. And in my future research, I'm thinking about examining the utterance of the students, I mean, the fluency of speaking for uh, things like um, calculating the word per minute of students. And I hope I can get good educational implication about flipped classroom in my future research. And um, that's all for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation by Mr. 
uh, Hajimori is about uh, English as uh, it, it's about flip classroom in Japanese high school English education. Thank you once again. And next for the second presenter in the session two, there will be present by Mr. Yudi Hartono. Sir, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can start, sir, to your presentation. Okay. Okay, thank you. I am Yudi Hartono from Universitas Bagaira Madiun. My data paper is Scientific Approach in Learning History for the Internalization of Character Values. Background is this research that history learning is potential and essential for nation character building. The loss of a nation character memory of its past can have an impact on the loss of nation character and identity. This research I am to design a historical learning model to internalize character values with a scientific approach. The method used research and development by Cole, Cole and Pop, data collected with in interview, questionnaire, and study of documentation, data validity with triangulation, and data analysis with the interactive model. This is on the needs analysis of model in the preliminary study, a learning model designed using the DIC carry and carry learning system design. The model result was validated by expert to obtain validation and suggestion for improvement according to their expertise to make the model conceptually or theoretically feasible. This is syntax model of historical learning with a scientific approach through the story of national heroes with the facility or values clarification technique. Scientific approach uh, reflected in the activities uh, observing, asking, data collecting, data analyzing, and communicating. Discussion history curriculum applies a fact based scientific approach with keywords observing. Asking, data collecting, data analyzing or reasoning, and communicating. The story of a national hero is a historical fact which contains the values of a national character to develop the character of student. Historical event contains moral conflict in which consideration and choice of values were needed. Historical stories invite people to explore possible a possible situation, issue, choice, and consequences to be connected with their life. Conclusion, scientific approach in the historic curriculum emphasizes fact-based learning. The history of a national hero is a historical fact which consigns values to develop students' character. The historical learning model with a scientific approach through the story of national hero with VCD, made a student as active subject in learning character values. This model can be used in other terms or subject with relevant topics and can be a consideration for character education policy making. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir for the presentation. And then we move to the next presenters. Uh, before that, I would like to check is, there is uh, Muhammad Fajar here or Anissa Irma Larsati.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Para peserta International Conference on Education and Technology 2021 Artikel kami berjudul Learn Material Develop as a Coping Strategy for Managing Student Stress During the Pandemic Ditulis oleh Rosmala Dewi Asia Isha Matondang Evan Libra Sianipar Muhammad Buhori Dali Munte, Raudah Zaimah Dali Munte, from Universitas Negeri Medan. Objective: The study aims to develop effective teaching material as a coping strategy to manage stress using the EDUDA. Education of Drug Adversity Application. A coping strategy is one of the seven life skills that a train using the education, EDUDA application. Method, teaching material, a design and the flow on The EDUDA application, the research, and the flow design use the ED analysis, design, the flow implementation, evaluation model, participation of two six students who attend. SMA Negeri 17 Medan. Date collection technique. Use questionnaire in the flow interview and training. Coping strategy teaching material. Have a patient expert validity for the material and media aspect. Result, result show that the teaching material for coping strategy effectively manage stress in learn during the pandemic. The training achievement support this finding as many as two seven. 93.12 present. Students have a certain excellent managing stress. The implication of the research in fact learning mode that must be flexible in technological and pay attention to coping strategy to overcome the effort, effect of learn during a pandemic. Conclusion, the learn material for stress management skill that have been development have been effectively used at the current time of the pandemic. This is evidenced by the writer's assessment of EDUDA, who has adjudged the content validity criteria and successful student skill training in managing stress during learning is seek through point one to present. However, the 
still student who need attention assistance to improve their ability to manage stress. This finding has implication for the effectiveness of learning during the pandemic use eduda which function will to enhance student skill in managing stress however is done then that trial and student training this weakness a gap between the need student and the availability of service that can be phenomenal research that fund the research can carry out. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Join yet? Okay, but we going to the next is from uh from Sir Sumani and Agung Budi Kurniawan will be present with the videos. Maybe uh Asati can present the video. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sumani. I am from Universitas PGRI Madiun. First of all, uh, I would like to thank to the committee of IGTES 2021 uh, for giving me a chance to present my paper. I also would like to express my deep uh, gratitude to all of the presenters in this room. In the break room nine of the paralysis of the second International Conference on Education and Technology, ICETETH, Universitas Speaker Matun, 2021. I am also want to thank you for everyone especially the invited speaker and at last um, all of the audience in this room uh, thank you very much for joining my presentation uh, i would like to present my paper entitled potential benefit of combination of english language teaching and stem to start I would like to present my background of my paper. Uh, at the present day, the student face a multitask and demand. The demand consists of multi skills which are related to real life necessities. Uh, the primary condition is that one skill is insufficient to get the maximum output of life practice. And then the second uh, life practice is also included in the education we are and students 
of encounter difficulties because of their lack of knowledge and experiences, especially for their non-education background. And one example is a medical student would like to write an English traducive for his or her patients, or a businessman who must promote his project to foreigner. And then uh, the effect are necessary for establishing social interaction and cognitive abilities. Those two skills actually cannot be separated from each other. The cognitive abilities contract student basic knowledge and skill of their educational background. Um, Meanwhile, the social interaction skill uh, facilitates their competence to be applied uh, for social interaction with other person who are not in line with their educational background and level. And one type of skill, life skill in this case, seem known to be enough. It is essential, but I mean this essential background of this paper, that one skill for real life practice is not enough. And a graduate student of a computer application must have the skill of bargaining or offering his or her software product to the consumer. And then STEM is a one of multidiscipline teaching learning models which could keep a better solution for the necessary or multi skills. In this case, the STEM integrate four disciplines, including science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in every teaching and learning activities. And then Based on the explanation above, the, the question is whether STEM is enough to imply multi skill of life to the students. And then, unfortunately, the, the answer is that STEM is insufficient to keep the real life skill to students. STEM cover four types of science disciplines and the problem is how and what type of social skill for interaction for student based education background is and then one reasonable prospect is to combine stem with a foreign language skill which is english uh, the combination of the STEM and English language teaching learning is one beneficial solution. It is caused that conquering English as a foreign language is supposed to support the four study discipline of STEM. And students are expected not to get the interaction problem because of lack of uh, communication and language application competence. And then the application of English and STEM could bring students to real world or social practice. Uh, they will learn the basic content of STEM study discipline and how to communicate their competences in social life practice. And this combination over larger study area and 
benefit rather than homogeneous study area. And then uh, the following one is, uh, what is the outline of the STEM implementation? STEM is uh, implementation of four disciplines, including science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And then second one, the uh, STEM teaching model is an integrated model for students. Uh, it has been explained in the previous slide that STEM cover four science area, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it seems to offer an extensive discipline. But this paper review that STEM needs to be developed for other study program and practices. And then the integration of the model of STEM is not fake. Uh, not fake, it does not mean that STEM is a broken or failed method. Uh, it means that uh, STEM is flexible, STEM could be combined or integrated with other disciplines. Uh, it depends on the demand wisdom and expected output of teaching and learning practice. And then the foreign language of English is uh, the closest position of STEM model application. English scale is about learning the rule of using the language and how to apply the content of social interaction. English uh, covers some specific applied linguistic skill. The following one, I would like to talk about the four elements of STEM. What are they? The first, the STEM teaching model promotes the learner's outcome as the focus of the teaching and learning. I mean the teaching learning is about the process of transferring knowledge and how teacher could give the real experience. The theory and the real life practice must be blended. And then the second STEM model Never learner to undergo authentic, active, and meaningful learning activities. Students are free uh, to overcome the current life material. They could join classroom activities to read meaningful experiences. And the teacher still has to control the process quality. And the third, that the STEM teaching model uh, promotes the planned learning experiences based on theory, pedagogical expert approach, and even proven research. Uh, the integrated material will give larger learning input and the potential benefit the students are not limited to develop patient and also competent in the decided area of teaching learning. And fourth, the, the STEM teaching model uh, provides learners with different experiences by collaborating with external resources. The fourth element, tend to be uh, the basis of combination STEM and the English language teaching. And then what about the STEM for English as foreign language classroom? 
the first one that English can be defined to be a combination of cognitive and interactive scale. A good scale of language application has a contribution to facilitate effective STEM teaching learning. And language learning and practice significantly English could facilitate STEM implementation. And then the second, in this case, the, the students are faced with the problem of learning content and the language use for the content learning process. Uh, it is one uh, strong <laughs> the ground to combine EFL or English as a foreign language with STEM. And that one, the, the cross material and practice of STEM and ELT uh, construct the skill of making meaning to the student. A student could be trained to be responsible for their communication skill. Uh, they must have the target to be able to master and communicate STEM material simultaneously. In the part number four, that they could also obtain the skill of social interaction. It is about the content of learning and how to master a foreign language to facilitate maximum skill of the learning. Then number five, that STEM model and English language teaching or EFL study and practice uh, could simultaneously build the multi-skill of the cognitive and social interaction skill. A combination of content mastery and interaction skill could support the student life practice. Their English practice could also save them from an appropriate social interaction. They are supposed to be prepared to practice their STEM background for real life practice in society. Then the following one, I would like to talk about the application of STEM and English language teaching in Indonesia. Commonly that English language teaching could be divided into general program and specific program. And the specific program is more popularly called ESP or English for specific purposes. And ESP is very convenient to be subject or the target of combined application of STEM and ELT in Indonesia. And then ESP uh, could facilitate students to master a new vocabulary with focus on STEM study material and discipline. Then ESP helps students to be more professional and their study focus. And the last one that it could also limit student focus on expertise. The conclusion, the first conclusion in this paper is that 
the combined application of STEM model and English language teaching could minimize the student time consuming learning portion. And the second one, the, the application of English and STEM content could be carried out simultaneously. And the third conclusion that the teacher would like to apply the combination model need serious preparation and also need a serious activeness because that this one is very important if we would like to combine the application of STEM model and ELT. Okay, that's all that I would like to present today. I thank you all uh, for your kind attention. And also, I do hope that this presentation may be useful. And see you again at the IEC Tech 2023 and maybe at other scientific meeting in the future. See you later. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, uh, thank you, sir, for the presentation. We move to the question and, and answer session. I think there is Mem Marheni that would be asked question. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. I want to ask to Mr. Mori. Uh, when you say Mr. Mori, you say no significant in traditional classroom and flip classroom. You say if that is because the ecosystem in traditional classroom is the same with the flip classroom. So I want to know how how you how you applied the flip classroom in that experiment class. That is the uh, first question. And question two: uh, How about the measure when you when you have a multiple choice for the question one? Till the question ten, uh, why you don't uh, don't have the easy test to the class? And the third question, uh, can you tell us how how the condition in traditional class? Maybe I think that is not the traditional class, cause you uh, get the ICT in in the class too. Thank you. Thank you very much for asking me the questions. So I'd like to answer your first question that um, how I implemented my first classroom. Um, it was that I made uh, the video lectures and so that the students could watch them before class. And I said, um, actually in the first classroom and the, in the ex experimental group and in the control group, um, I almost um, used the uh, same method during class, during time, uh, dur uh, during class. So I mean, the only difference, only difference between the experimental group and the control group was that um, the, ha uh, whether they could watch the videos before class. And th that was the difference. Um, the only difference between the experimental group and the control group was that whether they could watch the lecture videos before class. And in the class, in during class, I almost use the same method, how to teach English for the students. Uh, did, did I answer your question for the, did I answer for your first question? Yes, yes, of course. And, uh, and the second question. Okay, and the second question, so why I didn't use the essay test for the students was simply that um, I, I use the um, multiple choice question um, because 
it, it didn't take much time for analyzing uh, the scores. That, that's only the uh, short, simple reason why I didn't uh, use essay task for the students. Um, I, 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 of course, I agree with um, more, uh, I, it would have been better or that um, I had used the more um, complicated um, the test, uh, things like um, essay tasks for the students. And um, did, did I answer your second question? Yes, that's enough. Okay. And, and um, for the third questions, I'm sorry, I couldn't catch your third question. So uh, can you ask me again? For the third questions? Yes, um, third question. Yes, uh, I want to know how you, how you can describe the traditional traditional class. So I can not uh, the different class about the flip classroom, because I think the traditional class uh, that is not a traditional because you have a ICT, you you use the uh, smartphone, you use the tablet or another video maybe, and I think that is not uh, how you 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 condition the flip classroom. Okay. Um, um, yeah, thank you for asking me that um, the question. So um, as you say, the definition of the traditional classroom um, is thought to be, uh, is thought to the one that um, teachers explain the um, concepts of, um, a, for example, a English structure or grammar points um, before the students and the student, for example, students uh, only take notes uh, of what teachers say. Um, that's one of the definitions of the traditional classroom. But um, as you um, mentioned about my research, um, I used um, the ICT tools for uh, also for the traditional classroom. So in, in terms of that uh, situation, um, I, I agree with that. Uh, it, it's, it's not the, um, it's not the, real traditional, um, it, I'm not sure uh, if there is a real traditional classroom, but um, I agree with um, that uh, it's, uh, it's not the real traditional classroom um, in my research. And thank you for um, your, uh, thank you for asking the questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Mori, maybe you can uh, all of the students in Japan, so you can say the traditional classroom or all can flip classroom, maybe in the pandemic, so you, uh, uh, we can uh, use the blended learning in the... Excuse me, uh, can you ask me again? Yes, uh, are you, uh, maybe I can say if all of the school in the Japan, uh, we, we can say if all of that is traditional class. So the traditional class <laughs> have used the ICT smartphone and all, and that is uh, traditional uh, class. Uh, 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 it, it depends on um, each class, it, it, it depends on each school. Uh, I mean, uh, whether it is a high school or a junior high school or elementary school. So um, in Japan, um, I can say, um, I can say that uh, many teachers have um, different approaches for um, teaching students. So uh, I cannot say uh, it, there is one common uh, tendency in uh, tendency about um, school education in Japan. So, um, but, but, but I believe that free classroom has a very um, potential advantages for the learning uh, English. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Modi. Thank, thank you very for, much for asking me the question. Thank you for the question from Member Harney and the answer from Mr. Keiji Mori. And next, uh, in the textbook, there are a lot of uh, questions there. And for the first is from uh, Prof. Siro Ozima to Dr. Ranes. Uh, how common are EMI type classes at universities in the Philippines? Are they becoming more widespread currently? Maybe Dr. Uh, Ranit could be answered that. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Thank you for that question, Dr. Shiro. Um, in the Philippine, in the 1987 Philippine Constitution, 
English is declared as the second language of the Philippines. And in, in other memoranda, laws in orders of the Department of Education and the Commission on Higher Education in the Philippines uh, stated that English should be used in teaching uh, courses or subjects that are, uh, that are not uh, a Filipino language related. For example, if, the, if it's Filipino literature you teach using the Filipino language or the different languages in the Philippines. But for technology courses, we are using, uh, we, it has been declared that English should be used as the primary medium of instruction, while uh, Filipino and other local languages are declared to be auxiliary languages or helping languages. And you also mentioned that, yeah, uh, we, before English language is being taught starting from kindergarten to college until the graduate school. But with the curricular reform, English language now is being learned in the public school starting grade three, while mother tongue for grade one, uh, kindergarten to grade two. But in some private school, they use they are, they are already teaching English starting in the kindergarten until the college degree. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, Thank you also for the commendation on my on my Kasama framework. Perhaps you're also interested. Other researchers could use that in in future investigation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the question from Prof. Uh, Ojima and also the. Tono. From uh, Prof. Uh, Ojima. The question is, could you clarify the difference between your scientific approach to history learning, to history learning and more conventional approaches? And second is, in Indonesia, do senior high school students have to memorize many historical facts? In Japan, they do. Thank you. You can uh, answer that, Mr. Yudi Arton. Thank you, Mr. Shiro Ojima. Saya bisa dibantu terakhir, Mas, ya? Gimana? Okay. Eh, daripada nanti salah paham. <laughs> gitu ya. Ya, jadi uh, pembelajaran sejarah di Indonesia, ya, termasuk juga di sekolah menengah atas, itu sudah mulai ada pergeseran, ya, ada perubahan. Kalau dulu uh, banyak menggunakan metode konvensional yang lebih banyak menghafal, sekarang sudah bergeser dengan menggunakan pendekatan saintifik. yaitu dengan kegiatan-kegiatan yang Pak biar ditranslate. Oh, yes. oh ya. Yeah. Jangan cepat-cepat. Um, yeah, the Dr. Harton said that uh, there are a lot of uh, development from the history learning in Indonesia from the conventional approach to point to the uh, scientific approach. Ya, yeah, pendekatan saintifik dalam uh, pembelajaran sejarah itu dengan kegiatan-kegiatan uh, mengobservasi mengobservasi masa lampau ya ada di fata-fata yang masa lampau dicermati gitu ya silakan uh, is it that um, in the historical learning it is about how to motiv uh, motivate the students to learn about the past of the historical learning Yang kedua dengan mengajukan pertanyaan atau merumuskan masalah-masalah yang ada uh, atau tentang uh, peristiwa di masa lampau yang belum bisa terjawab. Then uh, try to solve the problems that there in in the past that you could not solve in the past. So uh, the student uh, given a question related with the something that is about the past. Kemudian berikutnya untuk menjawab masalah itu. dilakukan kegiatan-kegiatan mengumpulkan data dari sumber-sumber sejarah. Then after that, the students collect the data from the historical, and then uh, is there... data, data itu kemudian dianalisis dan disimpulkan sesuai dengan kemampuan siswa. And then, yang, did... ah, ya. and then the data is Uh, analyze by the how the interpret by the students how they are uh, they are uh, they are think about the historical our historical in Indonesia. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Kemudian pertanyaan berikutnya tadi uh, 
Penelitian saya ini uh, dengan metode riset and development, tapi baru sampai merancang model dan divalidasi oleh para ahli. Jadi baru sampai situ. The uh, research just start in the um, methodology, I think. Yes, sir. Can you repeat again? Sorry. Uh, research and development. Okay. So it just start in the research development. Tapi baru sampai uh, merancang model dan divalidasi oleh ahli, validasi secara uh, teori begitu. And then just start in the model and then to relate with the historical of Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ciro. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry. You. My English not good. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Thank, thank you. you. And next question uh, for Dr. Sumani. Is Dr. Sumani here? Oh, so sorry for uh, Prof. Siro Ozima. Uh, Dr. Sumani said that uh, he was busy to do something, so I think uh, he he can't uh, answer your question here. No problem. Okay. okay. And next for a data question from Dr. Ranesh. The first question is from Sir Mori. Uh, how did you choose this letter who were assigned to in the control and experimental? Thank you for the question. Um, I answered in chat. Um, they, they were the same classrooms as the usual ones. I mean, they were, they were, um, they were, this, it was decided that the classrooms uh, from the scores of the entrance examination of that high school. Um, and the levels of English were almost the same between the two groups. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for the question for Dr. Anet and also the answer from Mr. Faisal Mori. Next, also there is question from Sir Yudi. How did you develop or arrive at your model? What are your basis from uh, Dr. Anet? Maybe you can answer, Sir Yudi Hartono. Ya, yeah. model saya baru sampai uh, perancangan model. Kemudian uh, perancang model itu didasarkan pada fakta di lapangan. Mau mas? He said that uh, still start in the model and then uh, it's just about the model and then it's not far away from the that model. Rancangan model tersebut kemudian divalidasi oleh ahli secara konsep dan teori. And then the model is uh, would be validated by the expert. And then jadi baru sampai situ kan? Anu, uh, so it's um, just only ya, in there in the model of the. Okay, I think yeah, is answer the question for Dr. Renes. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Renes. Okay, thank you for all of the question because uh, I think the time is the time is uh, not enough. To, so we have to go into the next presenters. For the next presenters, there will be Mr. Mr. Mohammed Fajar. Okay. Hello, Mr. Okay. You can start now, Mr. Uh, uh, maybe you can share my PowerPoint. No. Have you sent it to us, sir? The, oh, okay, okay. The PPT. 
I send it to Mr. Saibani. <laughs> okay, I will share. How 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 I can share my PowerPoint? You can uh, click in the chat. In the chat book. Chat. Yes. You okay. can send it there. From YouTube group? No, for Present. everyone. For everyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oke, okay. uh, mungkin Mas Aiti bisa dibantu. Wait, sir. We still try to open it. Okay, sir, I think you can start. Okay, thank you very much for the time given to me to present uh, my article. Okay, yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to all uh, audience, special for Professor Kaiju Mori from Japan. <laughs> okay, uh, the title of My article is student perception towards English course in asynchronous online learning through WhatsApp during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, maybe uh, my article or my research was conducted uh, in learning process when uh, in Indonesia, as we have known that, 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 that there is a pandemic, yeah, COVID-19. So this uh, pandemic changed everything in Indonesia and force our life to be restart. Maybe uh, the, the, the operator can move to the next. Okay. As you have known that uh, COVID-19 uh, of coronavirus hit our nation throughout the world, including in Indonesia. It means that uh, this virus of COVID-19 force all humans to restart their life. Why? Yes, because uh, there are many things yeah, in their life must be changed. For example, when uh, the people can uh, sell uh, what they have uh, lively, and then uh, because of the COVID-19, so the way of uh, their selling Well, what's uh, what they call, yeah? Uh, it's prohibited, yeah? Uh, was changed, yeah? From direct to uh, online selling. And of course, also uh, the education. The education has also become the effect of the virus, why? Because before the virus uh, COVID-19, uh, the education or the learning process is carried out in the offline. But uh, because of this COVID-19, so uh, the learning process on the move of the learning process uh, is changed or is switched to the online learning. It means that uh, there is no face-to-face -face meeting between the teachers and the learners. So if the if they if I use they it means that the, the teachers and the learners are not uh, ready to to face this case so maybe they they must be shocked but uh, because of this uh, 
uh, virus for the first time between the teachers and the learners uh, was still confused of uh, using uh, some supporting technology tools to carry out the learning process. But uh, by time and time, uh, the teachers and the learners started together to, 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 to face uh, these uh, real conditions. And also government restart and switch the learning process into online learning. And, and as we have known that uh, there are many on, online application, yeah? YouTube, the, uh, WhatsApp, uh, apa lagi itu? the module, yeah? and etc. But uh, in this, in this article, uh, in the research, uh, I and my friends, uh, Mbak Irma, try to conduct the research about uh, the online learning process using the online platform by employing WhatsApp application. Next, moderator, okay. It means that uh, why uh, I and my friends uh, employ WhatsApp, yeah, WhatsApp applications in uh, doing learning process because I think that uh, WhatsApp is very easy application. Yeah, it's very easy to use application. Yeah, and many application have been installed by the teachers and the students, and they are so familiar with WhatsApp. Maybe from the first time when at the time I've been. Four years ago, maybe they're not so familiar, but now they are so familiar. And the WA, oh, WhatsApp application is very easy to use. And the use of social network tools can accommodate it back. I think that uh, when we use uh, WhatsApp applications, we can uh, also uh, accommodate uh, the, a good communication between the teachers and the learners. It depends on the, the competency of the teachers and learners, how they can uh, improve the quality of their uh, communications yeah, in the learning process yeah, in online. Okay, next. So, um, based on this, because the, uh, I think that uh, the mode of the online learning is still new yeah in two years in indonesia so we uh, i and my friend needs to uh, conduct to, to to conduct the research referring to the 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 use of the the online learning using uh, whatsapp applications when we and and we uh, focus on the theme of the perception how uh, do they have perceptions of uh, the use of uh, WhatsApp application when uh, WhatsApp uh, was used in the learning process? Uh, maybe uh, the most important questions is uh, is uh, WhatsApp applications giving uh, positive or negative perception to the teachers or the to the students? And next. Okay, yeah. when we talk about uh, perception, it means that uh, we talk about the belief. It means that uh, the teachers and the learners, yeah, when we uh, try to obtain the data to the teachers and the students, it means that uh, we try to find out about uh, their belief. Yeah. Or oh, uh, are there, ah, uh, what you call? Are uh, WhatsApp application very important or very, very uh, uh, supporting? Yeah, uh, supporting the learning process. I think like that. And when we talk about the the perception, we will talk about the, the belief. Yeah. And next, hello. Next, okay. Then about uh, the research method here, that the study, just descriptive study using purpose sampling techniques, 
And we take uh, the data from the grade eight, yeah, each class, yeah, at SMK, uh, junior high school, state junior high school, one perak, jombang. Maybe Mr. Kaiju Mori doesn't understand where the, the place is. <laughs> and so we, uh, get, the, get the, the data from the online questionnaires employing Google Docs, which used to collect the data and student perceptions by using the online WhatsApp platform. And then now I go on about the, the results. Okay, next. Okay, uh, in this slide, I uh, show two slides referring to the findings of uh, this research. Upon the type up on the table, yeah, how the student perceptions upon the use of WhatsApp application. As you see in this slide, maybe uh, in, in the first table, actually there are seven tables, but uh, in this slide, I only show two tables. The table one, when we talk about uh, perception here, maybe in the question number one, I think using e learning WhatsApp is easy for me. Okay, maybe. And the use of WhatsApp is very easy. And the students who answer strongly agree 16 and agree 70, disagree 13. It means only minor students who uh, answer uh, disagree that uh, the use of WhatsApp is very easy. Yeah, I think like that. And then I feel that I have become very capable in using e-learning, yeah. 80% and question number three about whether WhatsApp can interact between the teachers and the learners, 76, yeah, 76. And about the learning is very easy for me. Uh, most of the students, yeah, say that the learning using uh, WhatsApp application is very easy. And question number five, I can I can easily encapsulate with I want to do through e-learning WhatsApp. And about 63 percent, yeah, they answered that uh, they can easily accomplish. And about the question, I feel my lack of experience to determine the ease the ease of use of e-learning WhatsApp is limited, and uh, they. Uh, and set the green 76.7 percent. Yeah. So next slide. And about the student perception in use of our application in perceived usefulness about in Indonesia is the gunaans. How is the the perceptions of using WhatsApp in use in usefulness? Yeah. There are six patients like uh, in table. One, yeah, in here. Maybe question number one, yeah. Using e learning WhatsApp in my English course can me complete tax faster. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, among the six questions, as you have seen in this uh, in this table, that uh, most of the students uh, answered agree or strongly agree. Uh, but when we uh, give the question number one, two, and three, they uh, give uh, answers much more disagree when we compare with uh, the question number four, five, and six, yeah? As you have seen in the slides. But mostly they said, uh, Strongly agree, agree or this uh, uh, agree, yeah, about the usefulness of using uh, WhatsApp uh, platform. And next, we go on about the conclusions. Hello. Okay, based on the, the two tables that you have seen in in the slides before. That uh, I can uh, conclude that uh, the result of the study showed a positive perceptions of students from as 
State Junior High School Wan Perak Jombang ya yeah, with English course using the online WhatsApp platform. It means that the education pro process with the online system has good potential in the learning and teaching experience for the students of SMP Negeri Wan Perak Jombang who take the English course based on four indicators. Yeah, perception of this of the is of use, perception of usability, teacher technology to use, and behavioral intentions. And about the suggestions, okay. For further studies, okay, may refer to other methods, yeah, in media, in learning through online system, yeah, in ICT or integrated learning programs suitable for junior and high high schools. So I think uh, for other researchers who are interested to conduct the learning process by employing uh, the online learning modes, okay. It is a chance for them yeah, to, to improve the quality of uh, the learning process in the class by when uh, the learning teaching process is carried out in online learning. Okay, thank you very much for my presentations. Okay, moderator, thank you for the time given to me. Okay, thank you, Pak Fajar. Um, once again, I would like to uh, is there any representative from Universitas Negeri Medan? Because I can see them, one of them here. If there is no uh, the representative from Universitas Negeri Medan, we can move to the question session again. If you have question, we would like to uh, have discussion now because we still have some of times to discuss. Good morning, may I be recognized? Yes, Dr. Anis. Um, I have some clear, uh, one clear question for our last presenter, sir. What's the name? Our last presenter. Um, actually, we have a similar study on asynchronous learning in times of pandemic that my focus are on the use of Google Classroom, Messenger, YouTube, Tesmos and um, the e-classrooms. I, 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 it's very interesting that WhatsApp could also be used. So I could in, uh, in, include that one. Now my question sir, is, um, did you develop the questionnaire that you used or did you adapt it? Or Sir Fajir can answer it. Uh, okay, okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, Mas moderator, yeah, that uh, I cannot focus on this uh, conference because my my in the pas keponakan dekat saya ini meninggal mas, jadi itu pusing saya. <laughs> sorry, sorry ya, Mas. Okay, sir. I cannot uh, focus. Sorry the, for Dr. Anis because uh, Mr. Mok is, is something that is so he can't uh, answer your question. Maybe uh, another question for the others. Because Mas Moderator. Okay, yes. Hello. Mohon maaf saya harus ke rumah sakit dulu ya. Saya tinggalkan dulu yes, ya. Ya. Yeah. Ya Allah, saya enggak bisa ini saya bikin nangis ini ya Allah. Ya. Yeah. Mohon maaf guys, mohon maaf. Iya, yeah. iya, Pak. Iya. Yeah. Ini keponakan saya yang paling sakit kena Covid ini. Oke. Okay. Okay, for the others still maybe still have a question for the the everyone who still here. Okay, if there is no question, uh, I would like to thank you so much for all of the presenter who has delivered great ideas about the STEM-based education. We know that this, that is challenging when suddenly we are facing this pandemic. We have to struggle to find a way to make sure the education can run well whatever the condition, the condition that we face. Once again, I say thank you for all 
presenters and participants also for uh, the question and also for the answer. And please turn on your camera. We would like to have uh, take the picture. Okay. Okay, uh, I think that's enough. Thank you. And there is something uh, that I have to inform to you that the certificate that will be sent by email and then there will be revision also if it needed. And I think that's it, uh, our discussion and also our present presentation today. I am Bukut Laksono, the representative from all the committees. I say, I'm sorry if we have a mistake. Thank you, good morning or afternoon. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you everyone. Mr. Moderator, hello. Yes. Uh, do we still have closing program or this is already the end of all the-, the uh, This is content? the end. Ah, okay. Um, let me also say this one. Thank you very much, everyone. And to those who are uh, interested in conducting collaborative researches in linguistics, applied linguistics, psycholinguistics, and language in general, uh, please do contact me if you are interested. I am looking forward to working with foreign or foreign friends in the field of education and research. Thank you and mabuhay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.